Um, about a month ago, I went to Bright and um, I've done those mountains multiple times in the past. And I've improved my times going downhill by about 12 minutes or 12. seven minutes. Ten, it depends on the, yeah, depend right. the mountain. The overall descent time by 12 yeah. minutes. Yes, on these breaks. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Velographer Cycling Podcast. And today I have with me a very special guest, a guest all the way from over east, a, a woman who is a mom and an innovator, an entrepreneur, a cyclist, a champion of so many superlatives I could actually use, but hey, that's that's a fact. So uh, I'm, I'm not trying, I'm not making things up. I'm not trying to trump things up. She's an amazing woman. I met her a couple of months ago, earlier this year, um, when I saw an ad for her products. Um, well, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So I would like to introduce you to Magdalena. Magdalena, hello. Hi. How are you today? Uh, yeah, okay. I um had a crush about two weeks ago, so I'm at the moment on crutches, sitting on the couch. I'm not allowed to ride, I'm not allowed to walk, just waiting. Not allowed to walk. Oh, do you have a wheelchair then? <laughs> no, I do have crutches. I'm, I'm working on crutches, <laughs> but I'm okay. a very experienced war veteran, so yeah, it takes me a while to get around. Beautiful. Now, for all who are watching, can you give me a little bit of a background where you're originally from and what got you started or when did you start riding a bike? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was born in Poland, um, but I've been living in Australia for about 20 years. And as you can say, I'm not losing my accent. <laughs> but before we came to Australia, we I like I lived in US in Finland and just before we came, we lived a few years in Germany. You have um, been everywhere. Think, yeah. Goodness. Yeah, How almost. many countries is that? Like five? Uh yeah, probably five. Yeah. <laughs> but nice. I've been to a lot of countries. If you live in if you if you live in Europe, then you just travel a lot. Everything is very close. Yes, I remember being in Europe before, and um, yeah, you basically just drive from country to country, like the borders you just go through, and because it, it's the whole yeah. EU, so passports are not needed, right? Yes, so I did a lot of hitchhiking in Europe. I've been almost everywhere, that and is yeah, I really loved it. I'm not sure if I would do it now, because, you know, I'm talking about like 25 years ago. Um, yeah, but Europe is fantastic. But when we came to Australia, I didn't fall in love at first, but uh, like it took me a few months because everything just looked different and felt oh. different. And uh, it wasn't as warm as, as I expected at first. And I well, didn't have an... I think you chose the wrong, the wrong place. <laughs> Victoria, <laughs> Melbourne. Melbourne is like four seasons in a day, you know? Yes, it is. But now I wouldn't have, I wouldn't swap it for any other place, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, okay. maybe I will later, Brisbane, but as a country, <laughs> I'm very happy in Australia and uh, I don't want to move anywhere else. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. All right. Um, thanks for that. Now, my first question to you, Max, is this. How do you, or when did you start cycling and when did you develop this love and passion for cycling? Uh, so we always had bikes when we were kids. My brother was a cyclist, he had a road bike, I just had a normal bike, but he was always an inspiration for me. So he used to ride from Poland to Italy, for example, and back. Or hang Poland on, hang on. To Hang on, Poland to Italy. Now, in my mind, it's like one yeah. country to another country. <laughs> How far yeah, was so, that? So multiple countries in between. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll have to check. But 
it, it was like a month trip. So it was bikepacking wow. to Italy or bikepacking to Croatia or bikepacking around um, Germany. So it was definitely an inspiration for me. We used to watch um, Tour de Pologne together when the riders were going through Warsaw because we are mm. from Warsaw. Ooh, okay. It was always like, I'm not saying that our life was about bikes only because soccer was very important in my family as oh, well. Oh, are you a soccer but, fan? Yes, I am a soccer fan and a soccer mom. Oh, a soccer mom. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a do you have a do you have a soccer mom's car as well then? <laughs> I do have a soccer mom's car, yes. <laughs> but oh, anyway, back to bikes. Um so my brother inspired me first to do some bike packing trips around Poland. Mm -hmm. But then I had a break. Like I used to ride in Finland as well, but because I live there in winter and it's very, very cold. Um I had to ride in minus 25 degrees, for example, which was extremely cold. <laughs> minus and 25 degrees. Yeah, can your bike, it was very cold. Can the hubs even turn? <laughs> <laughs> and the problem in Finland was also the snow. So normally it would snow overnight. So if you wanted to ride in the morning, there was just this one meter of snow and you had to walk your bike so it was almost impossible to enjoy it mm. so eventually i sold my bike and then we did some riding in germany as well but it was never very serious so only when i came to australia we actually had kids first and then one of my colleagues was an inspiration so he was a cyclist he commuted to work he was racing as well and we started chatting about bikes and i got my first bike which was a hybrid bike. Nice. I'm and, gonna pause uh, you there. Yeah. Um, okay. That friend of yours. Are you happy to name drop him? Because uh, he oh, influenced yes, yes. you. What's his name? Yes, his name is Barry Brown, oh. and he still uh, he still rides a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. Shout out to Barry Brown. Thank you for getting nice yes. on the bike <laughs> again. <laughs> okay, go on. Yeah. So when I got this first hybrid bike. I did my first ride and I was very unfit because I was it was maybe a year after I was after I had my second baby. Mm. And I remember I went to Frankston and Frankston and back from my place was 70 K. And when I came ho home, I was completely wrecked. I just spent the rest of the day on the couch. I was just so tired. <laughs> and now, you know, we do 70 K in the morning, like every day. It's just it seems like nothing but yep. back then it was a big um big achievement for me i have mm. to say an effort yeah how many years ago was and, that uh i was actually thinking about it before i always think that i've been riding for maybe four or five years but i actually counted the years and it's mm -hmm. been eight years now wow so time yeah, sure flies so Yes, I've done my first around the bay on that hybrid bike. And then I just thought, no, I need to buy a road bike. And then it was much, much easier. Okay. And of course, you know, you start, I guess everyone starts the journey in a similar way. So you start doing events. Mm. And in Melbourne, the first iconic event that everyone wants to do is around the bay. But of course, there are different distances. But you want to do the, the full around the bay. That's right. Um, which I did a few times. <laughs> How many kilometers is the full round the bay? So uh, the full one is 250. 250 at one yeah, go. And that's, that's like a grand funder. That doesn't include the ferry between Queensleaf and Sorrento <laughs> that's on top of that. But of course, you're on the ferry, so you're not riding. How many Ks is the ferry ride? Oh, it's 40 minutes. 40. <laughs> sure. Oh, so that's a good break for you to chit chat, take some selfies, have a coffee, and then get ready and for the next support. part. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I've done I've done most events here in Victoria and also in New South Wales. Um yeah, so I've cycled in, in Tasmania as well. Mm. 
um, but mostly in Victoria and also in um, other countries like Beautiful. Italy, uh, Poland. Germany. Now, before I go to my next question, I've got one question for you. Which country, yeah. to all our viewers here, if there was one country that you cycled in that you you must recommend, it's like the, oh, if you ride, if you have one place you have to ride in your lifetime, this has to be it. Which country is that? Uh, hmm. I really like Australia, actually, because I like I like riding in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. because of the variety of scenery and roads so or oh, like we've got beach road we've got hills we've got mountains which are not too far actually maybe Adelaide uh, but then yes. again because I don't live in Adelaide I've been in Adelaide a few times um for two down under and it feels different because you're on holiday so <laughs> everything just feels much much better you want to move straight away but maybe if i leave there maybe i wouldn't enjoy it that much because mm -hmm. you know it would be boring after a while maybe but yeah i'm going to adelaide next month and oh, can't wait that is to nice. the by then. <laughs> but anyway you... yeah i think i think australia is fantastic so fantastic <laughs> impatient driver you haven't been to perth have you wa I haven't been to Perth, no, but I'm. I would like to go. I'll need you to promise that you will come. Uh, we'll record it for the record. <laughs> okay, yes, I promise I will come. I want. <laughs> and when you come, we'll go for a ride. We'll go for a ride. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Now, Magdalena, what was your first road bike? So, from the hybrid, um, what was your first road bike? Do you still remember? Yeah. So, of course, I just. I still have it. It's my uh, B bike. It's oh. my wet weather bike. <laughs> so back to the hybrid. That was an Avanti. Okay. One. And then my first hybrid. Uh, sorry, my first road bike was a giant uh, Leaf. Giant whatever, Leaf. Advanced yes. Or something. Advanced. Okay. And back then, I thought it was such a posh and fantastic bike. <laughs> And it was after the hybrid, it really felt fantastic. But now I have <laughs> I have different experience with other bikes. Your experience and your better. taste has I gone up, hey? <laughs> yes. And uh, but I still use it. If my other bike is uh being serviced, then I, I jump on the giant. And the only confusing thing is that it has mechanical gears. So it takes me maybe 400 meters to the end of my street to work out how do I turn the gears <laughs> on the bike. <laughs> so I'm not used to um, mechanical gears anymore. That is hilarious. Yeah, this I have been on DI2. I have, I have me? I'm on DI2 as well. And yes. uh, I think once you go electronic, some people might, might disagree, but once... For me, once I've gone electronic, I don't think I'll ever go back to mechanical. It's just such yes, a different no, feel. Know. Yes, it is. Yeah. So my current bike is actually SRAM, so that's a bit different as well. But oh. I got used to it. <laughs> Guess I've gone cool. to yeah <laughs> a few different types of gears. So oh, yeah, so my other bike, my uh, after the giant, I mm -hmm. had a Canon doing snaps. Ooh. And then, but that was an upgrade, like it was, you know, um, DI2 and that really felt like a fantastic bike. And it was, I, I used to love it. But you don't have and it then anymore. I, bought, I sold it during COVID <laughs> I because see. I bought another bike. Oh. I bought a more racing aggressive bike, which was Scott Foil Premium. Which oh, was a two different bike. That's a nice bike. Yes, and uh, I recently sold it because it didn't have these brakes, and I wanted to have these brakes. Mm. Um, and my current bike has these brakes, and I really love them. Okay. They didn't save me from I'm gonna, the crash. I'm, I'm gonna pause you there for a while. <laughs> Um, yeah. the huge even though it's been so long and the industry is moving towards disc brakes obviously um, a lot of people who believe themselves to be purists or they just love rim brake um, 
<laughs> what's your take on rim versus disc break you know will you ever go back to rim break or is disc break the thing that you totally love so before i only could compare lean breaks to lean breaks. I have no experience on these breaks. I yep. actually did one ride in Adelaide um, on a canyon. I hired a canyon from Canyon just for, for one day just to see mm -hmm. how it feels. But because it wasn't my bike, even though I kind of like those deep, these breaks, I once I returned that bike, I just felt so relieved <laughs> that I could go back on my bike and you know you just feel stressed riding someone's bike or or you know like a hired bike. So I can't really remember this experience much of these breaks, but now I've been riding these breaks since maybe July and I really love them. Like mm. I feel so much safer apart from that crash two weeks ago. <laughs> yes. I really like you, you, you touch them and they break. With ring breaks, you kind of, you really have to, you pull, have to pull on the break. levers, right? <laughs> yes, for them to, <laughs> to break. Yeah. So yeah, I think I feel safer on these breaks. I love That's them. That's great. Okay. And Let's, also, I uh -huh. have to say, so this was just one more thing. Um, about a month ago, I went to Bright, and um, I've done those mountains multiple times in the past, and I've improved my times going downhill by about 12 minutes or 7 12. minutes, 10 minutes, depends on the, wait, depend wait. the mountain. The overall descent time by 12 yeah. minutes. Yes, on these breaks. Sheesh, that's and I a know huge difference. Yes, I know. And I know it's here as well. It's in your head. You know, you mm. just feel safer and more confident that's because right. you have those these breaks. But, you know, it worked. That's true. I that's was smacking those mountains. I really enjoyed them. All right, but thank you. But now it's a different story. <laughs> because okay. I'm not sure about my bike yet, no. So from this breaks, let's move back to bikes. So after your Cannondale Synapse, mm -hmm. um, what came next? Oh, so next was the Scott. I mentioned it before. Scott oh, yes, the foil. Scott foil. Yeah. And after the Scott foil? Uh, and now, now it's my current bike, which is a Focus E Zalco Max. Ooh, very, the very German nice. One. Now, yes. Oh, yeah, I love it. Why did you choose Focus? There's so many brands out there. I know that, you know, when they say the world's your oyster and you you look at all the different brands, you've got brands like Pinarello, you've got Scott, you've got uh, De Rosa, all those boutique brands. You've got the mainstream ones like Cannondale. You've had a Cannondale before. Um, what other brands? Uh, BMC. Well, why did you go for Focus? It's not super popular in Australia. Yeah, I have to say I'm a typical girl. And I just love the color. <laughs> <laughs> so you went for color. But seriously, I think at this level, like really high level, uh -huh. all those bikes are great. And it, uh, it's hard to really choose one. Like you can't tell that this one is better than the other, or at least I couldn't tell which one was better. They all seemed like great bikes. And, and uh, I just... I tested this one and I loved it. You loved it. And I bought it. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on what you just said because on forums and on coffee rides, people love to talk tech and they like to say, oh yep, yeah, in the in the news reports, this bike is like two watts faster than another one, or this and that. But what you just said is so true, because it's something that I hold I believe in at least, is that. When, it, when you get to a certain price point and a certain level of um, technology in, in terms of bikes, it is almost all the same. It's like the difference is negligible. It comes down to color or maybe a slight shape. Uh, like, oh, the fork is a little bit wider. It looks more sexy. Or uh, that bike has a splash of pink or green, your, your favorite color. And you go, yeah, that's the one. Or maybe you just like the brand name on the down tube. And... Would you, would you would you just pretty much yeah, agree? I agree? And um I have to say I never look at bikes like I'm a girl. I know that guys you look at bikes like all my friends, all my male friends would know all my bikes. 
I never <laughs> look at their bikes. I'm, I might look at their bums or what kit they wear, but <laughs> I would never notice what bikes they ride. Like, I couldn't care less. And yeah. you guys, you talk a lot about bikes, but to me, I don't know. I just look, uh, I like how they look. Like, uh-huh. some bikes, they look kind of, I don't know, like, it's the same, more sexy, and other bikes look kind of more bulky, maybe, or mm. I think I like the race look (laughs) that's cool that's cool now moving on from from bikes and i'm going to ask a question because it's slightly different we're not on a couch we don't have your bike behind us um Mm. magdalena what what sparked the competitive cyclist within you (laughs) actually it's a very interesting question because i always said that i will never race racing wasn't for me I saw people crashing and I am a bit competitive but I didn't know how competitive I am until I started racing (laughs) I'd love to hear the story come on lay it out lay it out for uh, us yes and it is very addictive so the higher you get the more you want and if you come second then you want to come back because you want to (laughs) come first and I kept thinking that if you're not going to win, then there's no point to even enter the race. <laughs> that is true. You know, um, I was just talking to, to to a mate of mine and I said, you know, um, there are three, let's see if you agree. There are three kinds of people who enter races. Those who go in to compete for the win. Those who go in to sort of form the peloton. <laughs> <laughs> and those who go in and just waste their money basically uh <laughs> and i have i have a i have a similar uh mindset like if i'm going to go in and enter a race i want to be competitive um i went in a race on tuesday so let me just share a bit of my story i haven't i haven't yeah, released well. i haven't released the 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 uh vlog yet but i went in feeling all right my legs were a bit sore and a little bit dead but i thought you know what uh degrade cat four how hard can it be <laughs> famous last hard words enough. famous last words <laughs> and so i got there and there was a headwind that was 40 k's an hour 40 k an hour headwind and whenever we turned into the wind man, suddenly you're you're flying at about 30 38 to 40 plus k's an hour suddenly boom all the way down to like 20 plus and mm. pushing trying to get to 30 k's an hour which is like not even a race pace you're pushing out high 200 or even 300 watts and that was absolutely killing me and so i went in um finished mid-pack sort of proud that i finished because i was ready to give up halfway when i missed the break uh, but I felt so gutted that I could not compete for the win. That was like, oh, uh, stick a knife in, oh, uh, stick it in again. Oh, uh, I was like, man, I became that guy who just formed part of the peloton so that those who could compete for the win could compete, you know? Mm-hmm. That feeling that feeling is just uh, absolutely horrible. But will you go back? Yes, I will. I signed up for the next <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> next tuesday so friday saturday sunday monday tuesday five days from now we'll be around two and i'm gonna do better <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh you will and you know just i always um wanted to stay safe or out of trouble and you know if you can be on the podium that's a bonus but um i guess because i only raise girls in b grade we kind of had this discussion every time we started or before the race, we just said to each other, mm-hmm. you know, let's just stay safe. You know, everyone wants to win, <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's just stay safe because, you know, the, the, it, it's uh, it's very um, easy to, to to crash or it know, is, touch it wheels. Is. So, mm. um, yeah, but I guess maybe boys you um, even more aggressive when you race we can be pretty competitive we can be but i think i think the ladies are just as competitive 
No, I, I'm not saying that we are not competitive. We are, but um, I think there's maybe less less aggression. Less aggression. <laughs> yeah, possible, possible. Now, do you remember your first race? Like your first race? Yes, I did remember my first race. It was the handicap race. Oh. Um, yes, so I was in the um, like second last group of girls and mm -hmm. it was hard work for 60 k. it was just it was so hard and um yeah in the last maybe i don't know like 1k there was this last heel and um yeah i didn't make it i mean of course i made it i made the finish <laughs> line but <laughs> i um the yeah, hill was I that think... hard it was hard <laughs> yes and anyway it was a great experience i i enjoyed being there and and it was only ladies like the whole race was only for girls yep and i think i can't remember not the numbers but it was about 100 i'm not sure about the racing scene in perf no we've it's, got lots of races here lots yeah, of but racing how many, girls, how many girls would you have um the female field, I think, fairly big because we've got the tour, we've got tour of Margaret River. Uh, that or actually tour of Margaret River, I think, is mixed, but we've got road racing here. Um, and the road racing scene, I think, you get a peloton of it for the bigger races, maybe 40 plus, 40 plus. Uh, so grade. yeah, oh, per grade. Okay, per grade maybe is a lot smaller, a lot smaller probably. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So women's racing, I think I would love to see, I would love to see women's racing grow and explode here in uh, WA. Uh, we've got some amazing pro level riders, uh, female riders here, uh, who are competing. In fact, one of the one of our locals, uh, Cassia, I can't remember her last name. Uh, Cassia, forgive me for uh, for for butchering your name. <laughs> so I'm not going to say your last name. Like Cassia, who was at the uh, Twilight Race on Tuesday. Uh, Cassia, I'm not sure. Um, she's she's only young. She's only young. She's in uni, and uh, she'll be in Buningyong, um next month. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, good luck to her. But I think we're seeing more and more female cyclists um, join. A competitive sport and that's something that's really beautiful yeah there's but, one less now yeah. well one <laughs> nah <laughs> you recover and you'll be back back to racing again so mags from riding your your first road bike like eight years ago till now you've been racing what grade did you start in and what grade are you at right now if you don't mind telling people as well, what's your age? So people roughly know whether you're racing in junior category or under <laughs> no, 19. I'm racing master. <laughs> master. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm 45 and uh, I started in women's B and I am still in women's B. Oh, wow. So when you, when you started racing, you were already in women's B grade? Yes. Holy cow, you are strong. Can I ask you what... Is, is it a secret? What's your FTP? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not that heavy. <laughs> so my I haven't done an FTP test for a while, but my last time was... Uh, I don't remember now. <laughs> you don't I remember. <laughs> um, a, a, a rough number, a rough number. Just throw out a rough number for our viewers. Um, can we actually... Not, can we actually delete it and then I will check and then we go back later. A series I can't remember now. So Magdalena, when you started racing, yeah, what is your current Palmares? Because I know that you have a green and gold jersey and uh, I need you to tell me a little bit about that, but I want you to tell me uh, what races you've entered and what you've won. You're in a women's B, You've also gone for nationals. Um, tell me all about your your racing highlights. Yeah, so I, uh, as I said, I I've raced in women's B. I mostly done 
actually Naomi done have done road uh, sorry yes like road race rather than creeds um a while was actually kind of a creed <laughs> um and I came second in that race mm. um I've done ITT and team time trials as well and that's what the nationals um win was in the team time trial which and was so, great fun. I had a fantastic team of four really very strong girls. Very nice. So for the team time trial, um, can you tell people how it how it happens? All of you go off at the same time and then you take turns pulling? Yeah, so it was 32 case, I think. It was long enough. It felt like hundred and well, I don't know, like a thousand and thirty-two case, <laughs> because you just go as fast as you can, and uh, yes, we were taking turns, kind of try to keep it uh, one minute uh, per person. Mm. Um, yeah, and you just saw because it was the course there and back, so you could see those other teams on the course as well. Oh, and, was that uh, stressful? Uh, it was stressful. It was an extra pressure to see where they are. But then when you notice, for example, that the other teams, they are only like they are down to three, for example, so they've lost one, then you think, yes, you know, like at least we are still four. Yes, so we lose, actually... lose some more, lose some more. <laughs> so I think in our age group, or maybe like throughout the day, we were probably one of maybe two teams or a few, only a few teams finished uh like with all four, the riders yes with all the riders within the team mm. so that was fantastic and the other good thing was that we started as the first team so we finished early we knew early that we won and then you know you could just relax for the rest of the day some people had to wait until let's say three o'clock or something to start racing so oh, you know wow. this anticipation and and uh, stress level was much much higher. We were down by I can't remember now, but let's say eleven a.m. or something, <laughs> or maybe you know, yeah. And because it was in January, it was very very hot. So when we started, it wasn't that hot yet. But then later in the afternoon, it really got hot. So mm. yeah, it was just such a great day. You know, at about ten or eleven, you knew that you got the green and gold jersey and you didn't have to worry about anything anymore that's and you amazing. were just doing for others that's amazing. Yeah, that's fantastic. so how long were you for in the hot seat for because i know you got to sit down and wait to see oh this team came in whew, they're, they're slower than us another yeah, team comes no, in we were, just there. we were just there like no one beat our teams <laughs> how, how 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 quickly did you guys finish the 32 kilometer course Oh, what, no, what I don't remember. Timing? I could check my Java, but I can't, as easy, I can't remember those details. Because <laughs> it was all right. a year ago. And, you know, I never really pay attention to all those numbers. <laughs> that's all right. We'll, we'll dig what it out and put it on the, the screen. One. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, what are the, what, so of all your wins, which was the most memorable? Is it the uh, team time trial? Uh, I think this one was very uh, memorable. I also um, did one um, individual time trial, but I, I don't own a TT bike, so I was on my normal bike. Mm. And um, I got first in a non-aero bike and second in overall aero bike like the normal category and uh, so I, that meant that i beat some other girls on tt bikes which was a fantastic feeling then some people made some comments that you know people on non-aero bikes shouldn't be even considered and i'm thinking but you know i could have been on a bmx T bike if yeah I'm faster that's right on a BMX <laughs> bike or a hybrid bike then it doesn't matter on which bike you are that's cool. Yeah, that's so cool. that was that was that was uh, good as well. I I enjoyed that ride. All that right. Race. But I also wanted to mention something else that for me it's not only racing. Like racing was just last year, and I really enjoyed it. But I have some other achievements. So I like long distance rides, and mm -hmm. my longest so far was three hundred and fifty in one day. But it wasn't the hardest. 
The hardest was um, the ultimate Alpine Classic, which is 320 with 6,000 meters of elevation. 6,000 so in one day. Yes, in one day. So it's like three peaks challenge, false creek challenge, plus Mount Buffalo. And I did it twice. I did it once in one direction and then in the opposite direction. And that, that was crazy. the hardest ride I've ever done. Like these two rides were the hardest. And I think they were the highlights of my career so far. And That's the craziest ride I've ever done. That's amazing. Yeah. At, at any point in the ride, did you ask yourself, why am I doing this? <laughs> yes, I have. Especially uh, when we did it second time in the opposite direction. And... In the middle of nowhere, in Omeo, so it was kind of 150 k maybe to the right, there was this wooden bridge with really big gaps. And because we were riding next to each other, I actually, my wheel went through, like down through one of those gaps. Oh no. And I, and I fell and so I was really sore, like I didn't break anything and the bike was luckily fine as well. <laughs> but it really affected it affected my um my ride because i knew i still have let's say two uh, no probably 170 to go mm. and i was sore <laughs> so then i thought oh no you know like i don't feel like doing it anymore <laughs> But, but at I least finished. you completed it. That's great. Yes, That's I completed great. it. Yeah. And it was tempting because we have to go, like we started in Bright and we did a loop to Bright and then we had to climb up Buffalo. So we could have finished in Bright. Like I could have said, look, I'm done. I'm not doing Buffalo anymore. Mm -hmm. But I just thought I will do Buffalo. Oh, and, yay. Uh, yeah, I finished. I, I was in pain. I was probably swearing. And, but yeah. <laughs> You know, next, amazing. next to me, I'm going to bring this up. I have this. And this is designed by you. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> um, it before. <laughs> can you share with our viewers? Uh, actually, before you share with your viewers, I'm just going to tell everyone a little bit about this. So this is Legenda. Uh, Legenda is the brand that is owned by Magdalena. And it's a really, really comfortable kit. In fact, it's one of my favorite kits. Uh, it's really comfortable. One of the features is that it's really nice and long. It's got long sleeves that are seamless. And also the bibs are actually really long. So they, they don't hike up. Because one of the things that I really hate is when, I, when I'm riding, your bib shorts get higher and higher and higher. And you feel like, man, am I wearing sexy pants or what? <laughs> Uh, but thankfully, uh, these don't. Now, Magdalena, tell me a little bit about Legenda and what inspired you to start a cycling apparel company when there are so many out there. Like, mm. there's so many. Yes. What, ma know. what madness? Well, what madness is this? So I used to design um, kids' father cycling groups in Melbourne. And uh, when we were in lockdown, it was kind of my biggest dream to have my own brand. I always wanted to design more and, and um, have my own brand. But I didn't want to have another brand, which is exactly the same. I wanted something different. And um, environment has been always um, very important to me um, for many, many years, like 20 two years I was vegetarian for the last eight years or seven years I've been vegan mm. so always animal rights were important environment was important but I um, I'm not a f I, I, uh, I'm not a f like I'm not um, like a fanatic <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you're not crazy um, yeah I'm not crazy about it like it's important but um you know, I'm serious about it, but I I always say my body, my choice, your body, your choice. Yes. I'm not going to convince anyone or fight for it like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, chain myself to the tree or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I thought that uh, there is just so much of rubbish and we, we keep buying all these cycling jerseys and beefs, like all of us. 
if you open my wardrobe, I have like hundreds of dresses. And, uh, you know, you only wear them for some time. And then you, like, I try to sell them later on Facebook Marketplace, for example, if I don't wear them anymore. But basically, it all finishes as rubbish. And the mm. more we buy, the more we create. And I thought that, first of all, if we can uh, create something which is uh, use uh, sorry, which is made from recycled fabrics, which my kit is actually made of, from. So it's made from recycled polyester, which is basically made from plastic bottles. Mm. And that's the that's kind of one step forward. And then the other thing is, if if it's of better quality, then it should last longer, and then you won't buy another kit so soon. Mm. So you will have less or, you know, you That's will just right. use it for longer. Yeah, so that was very important to me. And, uh, yeah, so that's how it started. And it's been an, an amazing journey. It's very challenging. As you said, there is a lot of competition on the market. Um, but I think the difference is that uh, it is uh, not like a normal kid. And uh, all of us, we are cyclists for a reason. I guess all of us care about the environment, and so if you want to look stylish and and uh, don't compromise the quality, and you want to do s good for the environment, and mm. you know that's the kit for you. <laughs> all right, Magdalena, when did you start Legenda? Is it has it been a few years, or is it just pretty new? No, it's been only a year. So it's been on the market for a year. Of course, it took a few months before it went on the market to yeah. prepare everything to source the fabrics and suppliers and and build a website and and test everything because i i've tested a lot of samples and and the whole kit is actually made for me <laughs> i mean you know i'm a cyclist so i wanted the sleeves to be longer i wanted because i hate it when i it keeps, when i wear comes up right sleeves. Yeah, and then when you wear arm warmers and you have this gap, it's just for me it's shocking. So I want to have longer, le uh, longer sleeves, longer legs, because I don't like this Italian style, you know, like short oh, legs. Oh yeah, I know Italian style for the women. It's like super short shorts. <laughs> super short and I, I short and I don't like it. So and you know even the zip pocket, because I always worry that I'm going to lose something when I ride. So. Mm. Oops, you accidentally muted yourself. My son called me and I think they did it with the... Okay. Can well, you hear me? Yes, I can. So you were saying you all the zip pockets? Yes, the zip pocket is very handy because you can... Actually, oh, I forgot. I I I lost once my car keys, my credit cards and my driving license. Oh, no. That On a ride. So, um, yeah, a zip pocket was important to me. And also, you know, like a, um, a right length. Like, I don't like those baggy, too long jerseys. It just has to have this right length. And uh, I like spacious pockets, because if I go for a long ride, like 250 or 350, then you need, you need a lot of stuff with you. Yes, So you that's need to correct. have spacious pockets as well. And so that's how I was designing um those jerseys and those uh beeps as well and and i'm really happy with the end effect now for our viewers who are in australia and for international viewers as well where can we look at what products you have and how do we order yeah so um the website is called legendacycling.com so that's where the shop is. But I also have some, like all my uh, range is also available at um, at a brick and mortar store in Melbourne. It's called Lycra Brothers in Almond. If someone wants to try the kit first without buying or they are not sure about sizing. Mm. And you can always email me as well. And I know we have a sizing chat on the website, but People sometimes are confused or they need some advice. So I'm always happy to answer all questions. And But it's very similar. I would say it's similar to most major brands 
And uh, another important thing about those beeps is that they are made of one piece, so they have no panels and they are very mm. smooth. And yes, I know. Well. That's one of the things that I like. You know, when I when I when I take off my bibs, my legs don't have those uh, stitch lines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I think stitch... it should look look better as well. Yes, that's right. Um, it's very comfortable. And also, um, the material, the fabric is quite thick. So, my personal problem in the past was it didn't matter which bibs I was wearing, all of them probably after two months were see through. <laughs> For some reason, I don't know what's wrong with my mom. Yeah, sexy anyway, bibs. It anymore because I, I've been wearing Legenda now for, you know, like over a year now and I'm still wearing the same pair and no, there is no see-through effect anywhere. So, yeah. I like how you put it, see-through effect. It's almost like a feature. Um, just, just to give you some feedback as well. So, uh, my partner, Alicia, um, she started writing this year and got her onto some Legend of Bibs and they were phenomenal. She loves them really, really super much. She says the most comfortable ones ever. Uh, she still likes it. She She's had a few different brands already and she still says that the Legend of Ones are super comfortable. So kudos to you for that. That's amazing. Thank you. That's fantastic feedback. Thank you, Alicia. Okay. Now we come to the most exciting part. Q&A. So I've got questions for you, uh, Magdalena. Uh, you haven't seen the questions. You don't know what's coming. Uh, no, but hopefully, good. hopefully you can answer them. So let me grab my phone and start. So Arthur Derma One. I think in the context of you as a cyclist, what is your diet plan? Can you talk about your diet as a cyclist yeah so as i said before i'm vegan which probably makes it a bit harder because you know i need to look for some other sources of protein for example but um, i also do intermittent fasting so i don't eat in the morning so unless i'm going for a really long ride i don't eat anything in the morning so if i'm going for a 100k ride i don't eat anything probably 150 plus I would eat because I think you need some energy but if it's kind of up to 100 I just couldn't care less about eating um and also I don't drink coffee and I know I know I know <laughs> I, about coffee. I always stop for coffee with my friends but I just I've never I mean sorry I've had a cup of coffee one a coffee once in my life and I just didn't like it. So I just get up and I go for a ride. But what I normally eat, I um, when I go for a long ride, mm -hmm. I always have a sandwich with me. And I mm. like savory. So um, like I'm addicted to salt, basically. I could live without sugar. And you know, when you eat all those bars or those jazz, it's uh -huh. always sugar. But I like to yeah. have something salty with me. Yes. So I would have a, a salty sandwich, and um, but it has to be, like normally I like, you know, like let's say rice, sourdough, bread, like mm, I really love yummy. outside of, I'm actually addicted to bread as well, but I haven't <laughs> been eating bread for a few months now, because I can't just eat one slice, I could eat the whole loaf the of whole bread. Loaf. Oh, <laughs> okay. Know? That's something anyway, you and I have um, in common, but I like to I like to put a lot of butter on my bread after toasting it. Yeah, no, I like fresh bread. But anyway, if I go for a long ride, it has to be soft bread. I can't just you know, like you can't just chew on it, you know, like for ten minutes. It has to be something that you just chew you. quickly, you know, bite, chew, done, you mm. know, digest it, and you can go again. Um, so that's what I eat during the ride. Oh yeah, and I always have bananas with me, and my friends always laugh. Um, depending on how many bananas Max has in her pocket, it means how long the ride is. So it's you know, like <laughs> if it's only two bananas, it's a kind of a shorter ride. If it's three bananas, then it means it's a longer ride. Okay, that's amazing. So, um, leading on to this original question, so basically. Um, when you're riding, you don't eat before you ride, but you eat on the ride. 
Yes, then if it's a longer ride, then yes, I would eat. Of course, I would always eat uh, uh, during the ride and then after the ride, of course, as well. Okay, cool. Next question. What is in your bottle when you ride? Oh, boy. Uh, I'm hopeless uh, when it comes to drinking on the bike. Mm hmm I sometimes don't drink at all, but I would always have like if I have some if I if I don't forget my water bottle, then I would have some water. Sometimes I need traces of water, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I normally don't use any electrolytes or anything unless it was like a three hundred and twenty or three hundred and thirty k ride. Ah, uh, sometimes I actually have some um um like smoothie if it's a longer ride. Um, I would have a smoothie or mm. rice if you need. Yeah, but I'm horrible. Don't listen, you know, like, <laughs> don't follow me. <laughs> Just okay. drink more water. Everyone, yes, drink more water. <laughs> All right. The next question is about your equipment. So we posted a photo of your bike up. And so Joseph Shuttler asks the question. He says, DT Swiss says that the sailing effect of its wheels saves you about 30 watts of drag at 45 k's an hour over other wheels basically he asks is it true or not you know riding those wheels does it make you feel faster for me it's hard to say because i always i always love deep rim wheels like deep wheels and i that's what i always use but to be honest, I think it's my weight <laughs> that would probably make a difference. So I prefer to stay leaner rather than invest in some, I don't know, like 20K <laughs> bikes, which are probably 400 gram uh, lighter. Yeah, Fair so... Enough. Cool, cool. I, 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 can't, I can't tell really those wheels. They just feel fast to me. Okay, fantastic. I'm, I'm going to have to edit out this sneeze. That's... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <Bless> <laughs> okay, next question by Joy Mode On. Why did you go with SRAM and not Shimano? Uh, actually, I didn't think I would go with SRAM. I have to say on the side, it in my language, it translates to something awful, and I just don't <laughs> like the word. So I just thought I will never ride a bike which has these strong gears. And here I am riding it. But it was just a coincidence because it was just this bike, it came with SRAM. Mm. And uh, and at first I was a bit confused because you know I've used uh, uh, Shimano for so many years but you get used to it quickly as well you you don't even think about it after you know a few rides um oh, cool. yeah a pure coincidence the bike just came with SRAM and I like the bike I like the color so here I am with SRAM <laughs> okay and last question what would you say to young women or females who are getting into the sport for the first time? I would say just believe in your strength and your abilities. Because we women, we tend to always think about ourselves that we are not strong enough, not fast enough. We tend to apologize all the time, especially like I ride with a lot of guys and I noticed that uh, even I do it as well. Oh, you know, like, I don't want you to wait for me or something. Or I don't want to slow you down. And we don't mm. slow them down. We are as fast or as strong and just to believe in it. Because uh, I think it's just really bad if we put ourselves in this down. position that we are mm. not as good. And that's what they will think about us, you know. Okay, she thinks that she's not as good and she's probably not as good, but actually she is mm. we just have to have this like we have to be more confident yeah so never say to guys oh you know i don't want to slow you down or because you will not slow them down you will that be as fast beautiful faster. you know magdalena that is so true and 
um, as a guy, you know, I want to see more women believe in themselves as well. I work with a lot of women in my photography. I'm a boudoir photographer and uh, it's all about women's empowerment. And I think women's empowerment is also more than just feeling beautiful and sexy. It's also about realizing that, yeah, even though you may be a woman, you're as good as a man in terms of doing things. Because at the end of the day, we're all human. Biologically, we may, we may be a little bit different, or we've got male bits and female bits. But at the end of the day, when you're on the bike, um, yeah, women can be just as strong. And I think all it takes is the confidence that women need to have in themselves and what they can achieve, not just as yes. an individual, but as a whole collective group of the of mm. females you know um yeah and i want to i want to thank you today for your time coming on the this this podcast it's it's amazing you're the the first so i've got a few females lined up with your first woman who's appeared on this podcast and it really really means a lot to me and my little youtube channel so thank you so much oh. but before before uh, actually do you have anything to say final words Yes, I wanted to say thank you, thank you to you, Nat, as well. It was my first interview ever. I used to interview people a lot, but I was never on the other side. So, <laughs> yes, thanks. <laughs> it was a You're pleasure welcome. to chat to you. And, um, yeah, and I really enjoyed it. I was a bit nervous at first. I thought, oh, God, what are we going to talk about? But, you know, it's been an hour like this, and, and we haven't covered much yet. I know, I know there's still so much to talk about. I may just get you back on the podcast again later on. Um, before we go, um, do you, is there any special sale that's coming on with Legenda products that our viewers can jump on to, to have a look at? Yeah, so because Christmas is coming, I will have some something special, um, probably a bundle. So I, I'm not sure yet what, I just have to sit down and, and, and think about it. But um, yeah, there will be some specials and also including free shipping and and Ooh, that sort of stuff. Good. Yeah, so have a sounds look and, and um, yeah, thanks for supporting my brand as well. You're welcome. Magdalena, thank you so much for your time. This is where we say ciao for now and I'll see you again yeah, very ciao, soon. Ciao. Bye. Okay, see you. Ciao. Bye.